This is a topology section. If you hit the W key, you'll see the wireframe and each individual polygon that makes up the model. How these are arranged is called topology, and it can be done poorly or done well. In the case of SculptGL and digital sculpting in general, the only topology issues that you need to worry about is if your model is looking like it's being pinched or stretched out so much you can see individual polygons deforming. The reason bad topology in digital sculpting should be avoided is because if you were to try to 3D print the model, it could fail to complete or come out looking bad. Bad topology also has detrimental results in other 3D environments such as in games and movies, so it's always good to keep an eye on it as you work as it's one of the foundations of good modeling, especially if you're interested in this kind of art as a career. To avoid this problem, you can use the tools in the topology section to fix or avoid them entirely. Let's look at the multi-resolution subcategory. Resolution is similar to the resolution of your TV or monitor. The higher the resolution, the more detailed in terms of how many polygons it has. Just like TVs and monitors though, higher resolutions are harder to achieve from a hardware standpoint. Depending on the PC or laptop you use, SculptGL can begin to lag if the resolution is too high. In order to adjust the resolution, you can drag the resolution left or right to decrease or increase the resolution respectively. Subdividing the model will quadruple the resolution. To clearly see the change, make sure your wireframe is toggled on. It's good practice to only increase resolution if absolutely necessary. In this case, less is more, especially when it comes to your computer's performance and production level work. In fact, you can treat sculpting just as you would drawing. Start with a low resolution and block out the subject you want to create, and increase the resolution as you need in order to achieve greater detail. The reverse button is normally grayed out unless you are in the lowest resolution setting. Reverse does the opposite of subdivide, it lowers the resolution of the object. Delete lower will delete all subdivision lower than the current one selected, and delete higher will delete all higher resolutions than the one selected. If you ever find yourself with a model with too high of a resolution with no lower levels available, then you can use the remesh button to adjust the resolution to a lower amount. It is possible to increase the resolution as well, but remeshing will calculate the shape of your model and redo the topology based on that. For your project, this most likely will not matter. But when using the model in more conventional 3D programs, maintaining your prior topology can be important. It may be best for you to use the manifold tries remeshing option, as the model in SculptGL is already set to that topology. Dynamic topology will allow most of your tools such as brush to automatically add polygons to the model, thus preventing any need to subdivide. This can be useful when adding very fine details to certain parts of the model without having to resort to subdividing a great amount, which would result in a laggy and slow environment. Again, this shouldn't be abused just because it makes it easier to ignore topology problems. When dynamic topology is checked, you'll see three more options. We'll be focusing on the two sliders. The subdivision slider determines how many polygons it will add to your model as you use your tools. If decimation is enabled and your resolution is set lower than what density polygons is on the particular surface of your model, then it will set the resolution you have set prior. This way, you can reverse and decimate particular areas of your model without having to do it to your entire model.